Oh man, hey everybody, Jazu, I'm back with another video and I just wanted to carry on some of my uh, wandering mumblings around layer one solutions because again, for me, this is a key narrative and I want to bring it up because I know we're going to look back at it at this moment as an opportunity where we could have really started to identify and pick our favorite layer one opportunities and layer two. And we touched on that in yesterday's video, but today I want to carry that on by talking about Algorand because Algorand is a sleeping giant guys. And I cannot stress this enough. We've covered this a lot on this channel. We've looked at the technicals a lot on Algorand, but it's retraced quite heavily like a lot of coins have right now recently. But I want to pick up back again whilst doing our conviction research what is going on with Algorand? Where does our conviction sit? And let me remind you of some of the fundamental aspects of Algorand and why I think these things are bullish. Because I don't just cover a coin because it looks fun on the chart, right? And then suddenly if it retraces down 50%, we're not gonna cover it anymore. That's not how it works. But sometimes when the market is retracing so heavily like it is now, there's more value in focusing a little bit more on your fundamentals than there is in your technicals. You should never neglect either right but what i'm saying is just looking at the charts right now when bitcoin is retracing and things are getting difficult can lead you in the wrong direction and that is why in order to avoid panic selling so for those of you who hold algorand or hold any other project which has retraced severely in order to avoid that panic we need to build our conviction and i'm going to help you do that with algorand today so if you can appreciate that smash up the like subscribe guys because we're going to talk about algorand now Algorand, for those who don't know, is a layer one blockchain technology, right? What the founder was MIT professor Silvio Micali. Now, one of the things you got to remember with any layer one, any layer one platform, again, we spoke about this yesterday, is they're all trying to solve what is called the blockchain trilemma. And that is this dichotomy, well, trichotomy between three almost contradictory things, right? Security, scalability, and decentralization. And for the longest period of time, when all of these platforms were being built, Bitcoin, Ethereum, a lot of the academics in the space, they felt as though in order to become very strong at two of those points on the triangle, you had to give up one. Right? So in order to become very good at security and scalability, you had to give up a bit of decentralization. Now, what you're getting with these next gen uh, layer one platforms, I'm talking your Phantoms, your Algorands, your E-Golds, your Terrors, your Cardanos even to an extent, although that's kind of with the old, eight, with the old guns as well, because they, they were quite early, is they're starting to, starting to come up with solutions which are trying to tackle all three. Their premise is, hang on, why do we need to give up on any of this? Why can't we have all three? the decentralization, the security, and the scalability to grow as quickly as we want. And yesterday we spoke about, you know, I'm, I'm super bullish on Ethereum, and, I, and we talk a lot about Ethereum being a great platform, but there are some fundamentally big flaws in Ethereum. And namely, I mean, look, Bitcoin does about five transactions per second, right? Fine. So we know, okay, let's ignore that because people aren't really trying to use Bitcoin for processing. Maybe with the Lightning Network, let's let's put that to the side and people are using it as a store of value, right? Almost like a gold replacement. Fine, let's let's take that narrative. Ethereum, on the other hand, is doing 13 transactions per second. 13 guys. And that has got them to this point. That has got them to 450 billion in market cap and valuation, right? No mean feat. And this is before mass mass adoption. This is as NFTs are just getting started. Gaming is just getting started. All these amazing use cases, you know, not everybody has a MetaMask wallet. If I go here randomly to these people here, do you have a MetaMask wallet? Are you using the Ethereum blockchain? Do you know what an ERC20 token is? They haven't got a clue, right? Maybe a select few will know, um, which is why I can keep mumbling really loud night over here. But the, the issue is that's going to run into some trouble and we know they, they've got ETH 2.0 and they're trying to solve that. But to put that into perspective, Algorand boasts around 1,500 transactions per second and already are trying to pick that up to 3,000. So this is su supremely, uh, it's more than a 10x upgrade, right? If you think about when we talk about innovation in stocks or shares or anything else, when you talk about competing with another company, if somebody wanted to compete with Apple, a VC fund, from my experience, would say, how are you 10x better than Apple? How are you going to beat them? How are you 10x better? So in terms of Algorand, to 10x what Ethereum is doing is 130 transactions per second. We're 100x, if not more, okay? And that is before, that, that, that covers off transactions per second. But the other thing I want to bring on to you, and again, Silvio Micali, the founder, is a Turing Prize winner. This guy is not a joke. This is a serious team, a core A-grade team leading an amazing project. And I'm not sure why people are sleeping on this. 
they've also got instant block finality. It's already, you know, a couple of seconds, if not less than that, um, but they, they're launching instant block finality. So what that means is you can write, as soon as your transaction is processed, it's getting written to the blockchain, it cannot be modified, it cannot be reserved, reversed, and that is true security and decentralization. Nobody can go in and modify it, and the same cannot be said for some of the more popular uh, blockchains out there. So this is huge for where we want to go with decentralized uh, blockchain capabilities. So, you know, coming back on to uh, Algorand, the other thing to note, this is a very big point, guys. Is so you've, you know, we, we've discussed about them having uh, great scalability, they, uh, so many transactions per second, far greater than uh, Ethereum and uh, the companions at the moment, and also the instant block finality. But the other thing which people are sleeping on is it's a multi-layered, multi-layered blockchain. Let me explain what this means. We spoke yesterday about Ethereum, and I explained why I'm bullish on layer two platforms such as Matic and Loopery. That's because they're gonna sit on a layer above. So when Ethereum becomes congested with gas fees, this is not gonna become an issue for Algorand, right? Because what Algorand can do is they're gonna process all the smart contracts. When smart contracts become massively adopted, they won't need a Matic to operate above them. Okay, they've got a built-in layer two in Algorand. So think of it like Ethereum and Matic in one blockchain on a multi-level with Algorand. You've got both of those combined. So you can transact on the smart on the layer two, and then you post the receipt, the transaction data, which by the way, again, already they're trying to get to 3,000 transactions per second, instant block finality, straight into the layer one on Algorand, and it's there, cannot be reversed, immutable, and off you go. You've got your decentralization, you've got your security, you've got your scalability, and that is the trilemma we're trying to solve, right? Makes complete sense. Now we need to understand you've got proof of work, you've got proof of stake. Algorand is fundamentally built on pure proof of stake. Now, you know what the normal proof of stake is? You stake a bunch of coins, right? Just to explain it in very lay terms, because I'm not here to make things complicated for anyone to make myself sound smart. That's not how this channel works. Very simply, if I want to proof of stake, if I hold a bunch of coins, let's say Cardano, if I had to hold a bunch of Cardano coins in my what's called a delegate pool, I then get priority on the next block reward, right? To mint some more Cardano. When it's minted, I can get that reward. Now, the problem with that is the rich get richer, duh, right? And I, I'm a big investor in Cardano, so I'm not locking them, but I'm gonna point out flaws in, in any model or blockchain that I see. And that is one of the issues there, right? The rich will keep getting richer because those who have more Cardano will earn more Cardano. How is that a fair, decentralized system? Hmm. Well, Algorand doesn't do that. Algorand uses pure proof of stake, and the difference being that the validators that they pick are purely randomly selected. Therefore, we ignore this whole issue of the rich getting richer because it doesn't matter how much you own, it's gonna be randomly selected. Everybody will get a turn based on this random selection process of getting the next block reward. So look at that. Now, they don't stop there, Algorand. I'm, I'm smashing the fundamentals here, guys, because we need to understand this because we can sit at the charts all day and I have done so on Algorand and I'll continue to do so when I'm back at my desk. We can sit, you guys can look at the charts yourself, right? You can see the, the markings I've done on the charts as well. But the next thing is, we, we saw a lot of issue um, earlier in the year around sustainability and greenness, right? We saw Tesla initially said, we're gonna allow payments through Bitcoin. And then they said, no, it's not good for the environment. It's not green enough. Our grants resolve that. They, they've pledged to become the first blockchain to offset any of their carbon emissions by calculating how many emissions they're, they're producing on their layer one and then offsetting that as well. So that argument is resolved. They're becoming super friendly towards corporates because they're set up in the right way. They're green, they're scalable, they're decentralized. And by the way, guys, you know, we're eight minutes into this video and I've not even mentioned that they're the front runners for a lot of these CBDCs. So a lot of governments now are rushing frantically sprinting because they've realized they are so late to the game and we should not be running around with cash in my pockets i mean i'm here traveling and i have to do currency exchange and carry cash still why right governments need cbdc's and they won't go and build that themselves they don't have the funds or the resource or the knowledge or the capability to go and say okay we're going to build our own cbdc's that's another five six seven years of learning for them no they're going to go and find the best layer one solutions out there and build on those and guess what our grind is one of the leading front runners for providing cbdc's for a lot of countries out there so huge potential for our grind. i can sit there and list a lot of the fundamentals but hopefully if you're new to our grind or you invest in our grind just out of you know a bit of curiosity or a friend told you and we you know we get that a lot on this channel then let's put this to the side let's say look let's build our knowledge let's build our conviction because this is a great project and when i see it sitting at one dollar thirty on the charts roughly there thereabouts i'm looking and going we've retraced severely we're at about the 0.382 mark on the fibonacci retracement from swing low to swing high and i don't see it as being long we're super oversold right now and i don't see it long before our grand gets above two dollars now when that happens I'm not a fortune teller, guys. If you're looking for a fortune teller, you're on the wrong channel. But what I can say is when Bitcoin gets moving back again, when we get back into the, you know, 
into the bullish narrative of heading back up into the 60,000s, back to 67,000s, creating new highs, Algorand's gonna move and it's gonna move strongly. Why? Because the fundamentals are in check. Think of it like this, right? Right now we're at a traffic light. Bitcoin's not looking good right now. It's, it's kind of stumbling around and we still see some more downside risk on Bitcoin. I personally think it can, you know, if we fall out of the wedge, which we're in right now, I've mentioned to you guys that 42 to 45 range is open for us to head down to, right? So we need to be prepared for that because that's our next level of support. Now, whilst we're at this traffic light, what are you gonna do? The cars which are gonna sprint when the traffic light goes green is where all their house is in order. The gears are working, good shifting, there's petrol in the car, all sorts, right? You can take this analogy as far as you want it, but that's what we need to find. We need to find the projects where all everything is set. We look at the narrative, we look at the model, we look at what's going on and we say, hang on, this is it. This is the layer one blockchain that is gonna take us where we need to go. It's gonna be one of the front runners and I want a piece of that pie. And not just that, I'm not going to go all in on our ground, I'm going to go, hang on, does Phantom have what it takes? Does Luna have what it takes? Does Polkadot have what it takes in what it's trying to do? So that if Ethereum does win, and if 2.0 is delayed again, what are we doing to be prepared for that? Do we have a little bit in Matic? Do we have a little bit in Loopring? And that's your job as a crypto portfolio allocator, which is the only way to build sustainable wealth in crypto. That's what you've got to do. Find the narratives, allocate your portfolio position, and manage that position. That's your job. Don't panic sell, understand what you're investing into and build that over time. Hope you guys found that useful. If you find these kind of mumblings and ramblings useful uh, in this sunny day, then don't forget to hit the like button so I know you appreciate these types of videos. I know naturally these videos get less views, guys, because people want phantom updates, they want me sat on the charts, I get that. But I also want to deliver what I know is needed for the community. So if you appreciate that, smash up the likes, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.